Yo, 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 what's up? I'm here again. I got another topic for you today. This one has been in my heart for a couple of days. The Elohim. I'm going to break down Elohim. Some people say you cannot understand God. In a sense, yes. But what he has revealed to us, I could break it down wherein you could have some kind of understanding. A lot of times, if you get the definition of a word, then you can understand what it means or what is the character or what is the nature of the word. So, our scripture that we're going to be referencing today is right over there in the book of beginnings, Genesis. All right. Now, you know what? I should read out of my uh, Hebrew Israelite Bible because that has the original names of God in there. That's going to be very important because that's the name I'm going to be referencing. Give me a second. Ugh. All right. <clears throat> so, we're going to be breaking down once again. Elohim, the Most High God. But there's a twist, I promise. So let's go on over there in Genesis. Genesis chapter. All right. Um, I'm going to tell you right now. Okay, Genesis chapter 1, verses 26. Genesis chapter 1, verses 26. And it reads, And Elohim said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Verse 27. So Elohim created man in his own image. In the image of Elohim created he him. Male and female created he them. Now, you might be familiar with the term Elohim. And looking at it in a singular sense, uh, in our Bibles, it may, may read God in all caps or however which way your Bible puts it. So Elohim uh, is the original Hebrew term for God, right? So just think about that. When you hear God in the Bible, it's really in the Hebrew, it's Elohim. Now here's the thing. We all reference to... We pray to God, right? If we're not praying to Jesus specifically, we pray to God. You know, God help me with this, God help me with that. But listen, this is what you need to understand. The term Elohim, it is not singular, which means that Elohim does not refer to just one person. I'm going to take you out there real deep tonight. It doesn't mean one person. The Im is plural, more than one. So, in a correct sense, we should say the most high gods. So, in the beginning, Elohim. Remember, I said Elohim is plural. So, it really reads um, in verse 27, So, the gods created man in his own image. Watch. And I, wanna, I want you to focus on this part right here where it says, if Elohim was just one person, why would it say, let us? Who is the us? Who is the us if it's just God in the beginning? Was God talking to himself? Let's not get too deep here or, or spiritually ignorant. The gods said to themselves, let us make man in their own image. Now, this breakdown of this word even corroborates with other creation myths um, saying of how the earth was created. The Babylonians, the Sumerians, the um, all the other Eastern cultures, Eastern religions have a Genesis story. They even have a flood story wherein, okay, but let's get back to the to the, to the story, wherein the gods or the sky gods, right, or the sky people or the star nations, it's, it's, a, it's a great co corroboration and correlation saying that gods made man for a purpose on the earth. Okay? 
So I want you to hear this with your correct hearing, not with your churchy ears, but with your correct hearing. The Elohim is plural, it's not just one being. It is referring to a multitude. Now, even the angels are considered Elohim. Elohim, again, is a term which means God, right? It means God. So even the angels are considered Elohim. To prove that, why do you think we have so much gods in this whole hodgepodge of religious systems? Because those gods, lowercase, are nothing but the angels, the fallen angels, or the spirits of the Nephilim. When they manifest unto certain individuals um, as these powerful entities, which they are definitely indeed powerful, and they desire worship. They're, the Bible calls them, or the he, in the Hebrew, we call them the Elohim. Now, in terms of, because you may be asking me to specify, well then, if it's God, how, do you, you know, how does this all tie in? How does this all tie into your allegiance to the Lord and Christ? Well, in this way. Not only is Elohim the top, but I say that he is the most high, you see? So there would be, there are other gods. There would be no other gods. Then why would Elohim or Yahweh Elohim have to say that I am the most high? That means that there are lower gods. Even you as the human are a God. And that's in the scripture right here, right here, right here. In Genesis 27, let's create man in my own image. So God created you to be gods, gods of the earth, gods of the earth, God on the earth. That's why he could take a Sabbath of rest and put you in position. So you're a God. Let's just all admit it. Let's just all accept it. It's, I'm not talking about God in terms that you should be worshiped. But you're a God in likeness, in principle, and personality of the most high gods. But again, I'll specify that I serve the most high God of Israel, of Israel. That's a very specific God I'm talking about. This is very specific. Elohim I'm talking about. The Spirit has been revealed to me and says that because I created you in my likeness and my image, you are of the God family. You are of the God species again. Elohim is plural. So I remember I sat at night. I said, okay, God, in light of this stuff you're telling me, uh, I, I'm not understanding if it's more than one God's in what we call the Godhead body or the God authority of the Trinity, so-called Trinity. I'm not understanding. I thought it was just one God. I thought it was, I know you have, it's you. I know it's Christ and the Holy Spirit, but I'm not understanding. You're seeing most high gods. That's true. I'm just not understanding. So how do I relate to you? Do I relate to you individually? Do I, in, you know what I mean? Relate to you. I'm confused. He says simply, it's not, it, it, it is a mystery, but it's not a mystery beyond finding out. So again, to re recapitulate, you have, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They are three distinct beings. They are three distinct beings. Right? We're talking about the Elohim, which is plural, which means more than one. They are three distinct beings. It's the Holy, Holy Spirit said this to me, or the Father said this to me. <laughs> Though they are three distinct beings, they are one. One and three, three and one. Because everything that they do, say, manifest, is in perfect oneness. They never disagree. They are never out of harmony, out of balance. They are of one mind. One consciousness, one thought, one spirit, one soul, one body, one decision. Is that making sense? So three distinct beings, three distinct gods representing the most high gods. 
specifically the Most High Gods of Israel, Yisrael. They, they are never out of sync. So the term Elohim, the term gods, the Most High Gods, is accurate. It's not blasphemous. It's accurate. Because again, do the research for yourself. Elohim is plural. Multiple gods, more than one gods. But they represent, they are together. It's a, it's a company of gods, a family of gods. Specifically, again, a family of gods of Israel. They are three in one. They never disagree. They're always in oneness. Always in oneness. So he says, it's not confusing. You don't have to be confused in how to relate to me or who to relate to. If you relate to Christ, you relate to also the Father and the Spirit. If you relate to the Father, you relate to Christ and the Spirit. If you relate to the Holy Spirit, you relate to the Father and the Son. You see how that works? So there is no separation. You may even, again, be specifically praying, Lord Jesus. Guess what? The Father and the Spirit is also present. You could be praying, Holy Spirit, help me. The Father and the Son is present. You can pray to the Father. Father, I need you to help me. The Son and the Holy Spirit is present. Okay? So that is the Most High God or the Most High God system or the Most High God family. That is the Elohim family. God only creates out of himself. Okay, so they're at the top. Right. Underneath them, um, I guess I would say maybe in might and knowledge is the angels or the order of angels. I don't have excuse me. I don't have time to get into that. But the orders of angels. You have the 24 elders. You have the great cloud of witnesses. These are. Excuse me, the saints of glory or the saints that have went on to glory that are now in heaven, they're not dead. I'm going to give you, I'm going to put this little bug in your ear too. Um, if someone you knew that was a believer in the Lord, served the Lord, have transitioned out of this body into their heavenly abode with the Father, if they appear to you in a dream or vision, it is not demonic, it is not a devil. Because again, they're not dead. Right, Those who have went to hell, they are dead in a sense in terms of status. They're still alive, obviously, in the soul, but their body is dead. That's the second death. But those who have went on in glory, those that serve the Lord that have passed, if they appear to you in a dream or vision, they're not dead. So it's not wrong for them to communicate to you, you know, helping you or warning you, giving you a prophetic word because they're actually in heaven interceding for you. They're a part of the great cloud of witnesses. I just wanted to give you encouragement because some of you have been seeing, you know, um, your father, your grandfather, those who have served the Lord who have passed and they've been appearing in dreams and you've been nervous because you've been told, you know, don't talk to the dead because that's a devil masquerading as them. In some cases, yes, but I just want to give you that revelation that they're not dead. They ain't dead. So it's not far-fetched for the Lord to give them release to minister to you. I just wanted to break, I just wanted to give you that prophetic word. So again, to um, reiterate, Elohim is the Hebrew term for God. Elohim, the word is plural, which means gods. All right. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, with that order, um, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is at the top. They're the most high gods over all gods, even the demons. They're the most high gods. Underneath is the angels, all the orders of angels, cherubim, seraphim, all that. Um, the 24 elders, the great crowd of, lip, crowd of witnesses. And us, the humans that are alive in this earth in the land of the living, we are under the God family and the God species too. God said so he called us by his name. So we are gods too. We're under that God species. So do you see how important that is? Why the serpent had to come and beguile? Because he knew that. You think he wasn't there when God was concocting to create a human being, creating a mini-me in this earth? He was jealous. He was mad. He was mad or not. He was mad. So, there at the top. So, um, to tile this, Elohim is plural, which means the gods. 
in the scripture, we're dealing with the most high gods, more specifically, the most high gods of Israel. So when you're praying, whether you're praying to the Father, the Holy Spirit, or Yehoshua, which is Jesus Christ, you are praying to all. You may be, you know, saying a specific name, maybe trying to reach out to a specific um, entity within the Godhead body, but you're still in essence praying to all. They are not separate. They cannot be separated. They are three in one, one in three. That's the revelation I want to give you to help you understand God, to help you understand the gods. So the gods said, or the Elohim said, I know it sounds blasphemous, but just Go to the scripture, break it down, do the research for yourself. The gods said, let us, if Elohim was just one, why would he say us? Who was the us he's talking to? The angels? Let us create man in our image. Because Elohim, the Hebrew term for God, is plural. So it is properly said the gods. So if I say I greet the most high gods of Israel, you should be like, what? Man, God, that was an error. You went error. That was an error. The most high God. No, I said it correctly. The most high gods. You heard me correctly. <laughs> so with that, I greet the gods in the earth, the gods that God has created, the gods that the gods have created, the gods that the Elohim have created. And I greet, of course, first and foremost, the Father, Yehoah, Elohim of Israel. I greet Yehoshua, Hamashiach of Netzaret. I greet the Ruach HaKodesh of Yahweh, Elohim. I greet the angels, all the orders of the angels. I greet the 24 elders. I greet the divine council. I greet the great cloud of witnesses. I greet all of the spiritual beings, the spiritual, holy, holy spiritual beings that God has created. Those that we know and those that we do not know. Those that we cannot even conceive spiritually, mentally, and psychologically. I greet you in this moment. Be glorified, Father. Be glorified, Son. Be glorified, Holy Spirit. With this teaching, with this revelation, let this revelation spread out into all the earth. Let it enlighten the minds of the people the minds of the hungry souls. Thank you. I'm grateful, 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 grateful. God bless, God bless, God bless. Please like, comment, and share. Subscribe, and please hit that bell. Amen. God's good. Shalom. Peace to all.